specialized for mycorrhizae. So he dumped other stuff on top. So we got to dig down in it to get to the to the mycorrhizae. It's here, but it's just been covered by other compost. Yeah. You got a shovel? Make it a little quicker. Shovel will be quicker. Yeah. Get a shovel. <laughs> okay. So while he's getting the shovel. John and I, this is, we have our debates, you know, we go, it's all about style, you know, we deeply respect each other's knowledge and passion and all that, but to John, because compost is gold, right, putting it under a tree is incredibly wasteful, because the tree's doing better. We don't really care about the tree, we want to grow vegetables, right? Okay, and some of it you'll never get back out of the ground even. It's just getting taken in by the ground. Okay, oh, yeah. so, so from a commercial standpoint, I get to interject here. From Absolutely a commercial interject. standpoint, yes. When you're making compost, it doesn't stop. It keeps going, right? So if you put it on the ground, it's gonna melt in. That ground is gonna be more fertile, but you're gonna get less production, uh -huh. right? So when it's finished, boom, sell it, they use it, boom, it's in the ground as fast as possible. You don't want it sitting around and you don't want it sitting where it's gonna melt into the ground. So that was my point. Uh, oh. And it's a good point. <laughs> but what I learned from the biodynamic people, right? is that you always want it on the soil so there's always that interchange, right? Just like, you know, Lisa did a radio show talking about walking barefoot. That's it for the that shovel you got to raise. This is, this is the best. Where's that spade that we were cutting with before? I'm not sure. I didn't okay. see it well, at all over okay. here. I'll just use my hand. I think it's in the back of the truck. We're yeah. getting all this. Yeah. Yeah. Pat, would you spell mycorrhizae? I cannot Can you spell, spell mycorrhizae, Jack? M M-Y-C-O- No. R-R-H-I-Z-A-L. Yeah, that's mycorrhizae. Yeah. Mycorrhizal. Do it again. M-Y-C-O-R-R-H-I-Z-A-E. And then Thank you. go to uh, microrhizalapplications.com. And the best guy there is this guy, Dr. Mike. He's been at it longer than yeah, almost anybody else in the U.S. I'm not getting to where the roots are growing into it. Microrhizal, that would be Z-A-L at the before? end. And uh, microrhizalapplications.com. And there okay, you can learn about what plants right and what kinds of mycorrhizae for mm. what plants. Dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun. Okay. <laughs> okay, well here's you're starting to see it. See the roots of the trees are growing up into it? Uh, yeah. You know? Oh, wow. And so the roots of the trees, this, I went online, I looked up, hollies have the same mycorrhizae as vegetables. Not all trees do, right? But holly has the vascular or buscular mycorrhizae, okay? So it may also have ectomycorrhizae, but it has the tree, it has the vegetable mycorrhizae. There was so many roots before, if I can get to it, now that we're buried, it's hard to find. It was incredible. You just knew when you're putting it out, you were putting tons of mycorrhizae because you had all these broken root pieces. And yeah. you know they're infected with mycorrhizae because the natural world is infected with mycorrhizae. Yeah. You know? One of the um, tricks to grow mycorrhizae for vegetables is you, and now you can buy, because of my brother, you can buy mycorrhizal. <laughs> I, I went and told him this and I should have never done it. I should have made a million. But anyway, he gave the idea to a company and you can grow, you can get mycorrhizae coated seed. So grass seed that wow. already has mike, it's, it's called smart seed. And uh, so what you do is you, you grow a box of grass and um, pref preferably a grass that's gonna winter kill like a Bermuda or something, something that you think is gonna winter kill. And it has mycorrhizae on it. And so then when it comes time to harvest, you pull the grass oh, out like and you wash off the roots and that slurry is going to have the mycorrhizae that were on the roots, the and that's your mycorrhizae slurry yeah, for your crops, oh, wow. right? And then you can also sieve it, dry it, and make mycorrhizae powder. And then, so say you have a big box, you take a, a quarter of it out, mm -hmm. and you've wiped out those, and you've washed all them off. Well, you plant that again, and the mycorrhizae from the other areas will quickly oh, no, colonize that area so again. Like and now you go to the next section, you take that grass out, and you wash off those roots, and you have continual supply of mycorrhizae. Oh. I was developed in Pennsylvania a few years back, so it's a, it's an easy way for uh, guaranteed supply of mycorrhizae for grasses and vegetables. Um, trees, so the mycorrhizae of trees are called ectomycorrhizae, and the mycorrhizae of vegetables and grasses are endomycorrhizae. Okay, so this is closer to what we had before, and something about putting the other compost down has got a lot of it covered up. But see those roots? They were everywhere. You can even see little nodules on them. Wow. See that, John? It was just, it was full of this. Tons and tons of them. 
you know? Yeah, the little white, see that little white nozzle? Yeah, that's the mycorrhizae, you know? And it was just loaded with them, and I'm sure it'll come back, but we somehow changed the whole ecology when we put the new pile on top of the old pile. Well, okay, one thing about mycorrhizae that could be affecting that is um, they're really super efficient at uh, processing phosphorus. The mycorrhizae has the enzyme systems to go get phosphorus for the tree. So, if you overshoot phosphorus in a growing system, the mycorrhizae just shut down. So, yeah, this compost, which was younger compost, could have had lots of phosphorus in it. It leaches down, that could and on it. bang, they just go, okay, we don't need to make so much mycorrhizae, you know? In fact, this is so high salt, we're going away for a while. Yeah. We're waiting for this compost to mellow out. This was not yeah. the best compost that was put here. And Not good compost is high conductivity. And mycorrhizae you know? are native everywhere. It's just that once you know about them, Everybody get to see you it. might as well step it up. You know, like, mm -hmm. right? like in the soil food web testing, they have standards for how high the mycorrhizae should be for vegetables and turf and trees. And so if they're not that high, so why not give them a kick and, and yeah, put more of them out there so you have greater and more efficient mm -hmm. nutrient cycling. Sort of like, you know, eating good dirt for your stomach. I, I eat clay all the time, <laughs> actually. You need charcoal, too. It's great yeah. that stuff, too. Anyway, yes, this pile last year, I just couldn't believe the level of basically roots from the tree. Yeah, and since right. I know those roots, you got a good, mm -hmm. good patch? Yeah, it was like uh, this. Yeah. See, this is actually, it's, it's, this root, there's so much root here now that's taken over the compost. That's what's going on. This was more compost last year. That's what we had. It was wow, like that, yeah. you know? That's what was going on, John. John, you're absolutely right. Our compost pile is gone. But what we have is tons of mycorrhizal inoculant, right? Yeah. So what would I do with this? I would break it up into a, a, a row where I'm planting onions. And indeed, in the greenhouse, we have this compost, right? This okay, compost. this is your zero-in thing. See those, those long filaments? See how they're long and they're not like white dots anymore? If you can get that little line. That's the uh, fungal hyphae. They're like little tubes. That little, that long white line. Oh. It's right, right there, stringing across like a web. Yeah. Let everybody yeah. get to it. Just show it around. The web of living web farms. Wow. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> music. Can you bring the music up shot. now? <laughs> dun, 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 dun. No. <laughs> That's Star Wars. Wait, the <laughs> Woo! That's um, a good one. So what we've done is we had this compost and we we're going to plant bunching onions, which are That's perennial. Right. If you just don't take them all out, you always have them. And I thought, go get the inoculant. And the, my, John's product has mycorrhizae too. So we hit it with three sources of mycorrhizae and we planted them in that bed. And those onions are there. And that bed will stay an onion bed for a long time. And then when we want mycorrhizae, we plant onions next to the plants we want the mycorrhizae in. And they leave the onion and they go over to the other plant. You know? So you don't have to spend about, I think it's about 50 bucks for a, like a couple of pounds of mycorrhizae. Well worth it if you don't have them. But once you've got them living on those onions, you move the onions around and carry it. Right now that's what we're doing here. We gave some compost to this tree. In return, it's giving us mycorrhizae. Yeah. Um, and okay, I believe you now. Yeah. Well, and you know what? I mean, you're, from your standpoint of you've got to make a certain amount of compost to pay the bills, yeah. that makes sense too. So it just depends on where you're at. If you're in the compost yeah. business and you got to pay the, the you got to crack the nut for the equipment and be able to pay your mortgage and stuff, then you can't afford to let it sit here. But if you're a best practice grower, mm -hmm. you say that pile is my mycorrhizae inoculum. You know, mm -hmm. you let it sit here. We have some more on concrete. We have it in different places, but I like having it under this tree. You know, um, we'll probably always have a pile under this tree, so we can come visit and <laughs> say thank have you, mycorrhizae. A we, we appreciate you. We, we really do appreciate you. We know you're the key, the underpinning of the web. We're all yeah. part of that web, and mycorrhizae is one of those keys. You know? um, to quote my um, conventional grower friend, friend um, Wade McCurry at Choice Greenhouse, when he was saying organic, yeah, he, th he said, I don't see why organic couldn't work. Of course, it's like nobody's out there fertilizing spray in the woods. <laughs> Things are growing awful good. I guess it does work, you know? <laughs> And these are one of the mechanisms whereby it works, you know. Um, and that's the whole point of everything we're doing is just to say, you know, we learn to work with the natural systems, you know. We're not God. We don't know better than nature. And if we learn to tweak nature and take advantage of it and learn, learn its power and be deny, dynamic with it, we can get great results, be responsible, be sustainable, and save money, save work. 
Yeah, in the end, I think what's going to happen here, uh, conventional agriculture is going to jump in on this because less fertilizer, less water. That's it, you know. And and now, I feel real confident, especially after this years with this golf course, that I can tell them this stuff's cheaper. And so, you know, just a few years back, nitrogen was still really cheap. But it's not cheap anymore, and neither is oil. Biology's cheap. You just got to keep it alive. Yeah. So. I think that's going to be a. There's going to be a big change in. It's the future. I mean, the oil companies will come into its kicking industry. But someday, you know what? They'll be trying to sell us the biology. Stuff, you know? They'll be well, trying to yeah. tie it up and sell it to us. You know. Well, what do big agribusinesses yeah. do? They buy organic organic businesses out. Right. Yeah. You know, there's right. a. Forget what university used to. They used to chart who owns organic, and you'd see the little you know, Cascade Farms when they were small, and then who owns them, and who owns them, and you get out to this serious big agribusiness owns that's just another product for them yeah, yeah. so and indeed that's what Monsanto's about it's like well we can't own the current nature but if we screw it all up and engineer the heck out of it and patent it then we can own it and then you have to buy it from us if we can own <laughs> hell and then you can buy it yeah. <laughs> and that's what they're doing and we're just saying hey you know what we don't need you that's why yeah. there's this thing called shop at Whole Foods Sorry, yeah, no, it's <laughs> fine. I but couldn't agree more. Yeah. Only shop from farmers, no matter how small or small co-ops. Yeah. Pay more for your vegetables, but it's the way we vote, you know. Well, don't, when you pay more for the vegetables, you're investing in a community that can then invest exactly. back in you. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. But it's you're about, investing in a true we're all, future. We're all in this together. If we say we're going to support all the right things, yeah. then when you want to do the right thing, they're there to support you too. Yeah. yeah. And that yeah. starts next week, right? Next Wednesday. Farmer's Market Farmer's in Asheville, Market. French Broad Food Co-op. Oh, yeah. yeah, awesome. Yep. Next Wednesday. Yep. Spring is yeah. here. <laughs> yep. It's happening. Spring has sprung. Okay, so you got to get going. I got to get going. I'm going to go grab those transplants you said I could have. Yeah, yeah. you get those transplants, I'll stop by and tell you what they are, because you're not going to have any idea what they all are. <laughs> well, uh, yeah. You have some idea, but there's definitely going to be some you, puzzlers. What are you going to go to next? What's, um, really, it's about now. It's just about application. I think we're done. And then questions. You know, I yeah. think we've actually covered this pretty darn thoroughly. You know, um, you're probably all a little bit overloaded with information at this point. <laughs> it's a good overload. It's just a little, a little bit. I mean, yeah. But, you know, we all, I don't think we made um, survey sheets this time, did we? Well, we had the uh, one you were going to email, and then I was going to put it online, and we didn't get that one email. But we're going to have a survey online, okay. and um, we'll get you uh, a little notice maybe to you from the, from the people that were online when it's available, because we really want to have your yeah. feedback to make the classes better. And that's one of the questions, is, was it too much information? You know, should we break it up? You know, um, Just give us that kind of feedback. Something else, as far as we're talking about businesses, if anybody hasn't managed to pay yet and feels they can afford to pay, and if you can't afford to pay, we don't care, come anyways. But if you can afford to pay, it helps us to keep going and doing things and bringing in speakers from far away and stuff. And if you haven't managed to do that yet, if you get with Lisa and settle up, I'd appreciate it. Um, okay, let's head on back, and we're going to... Check out delivery systems. They've got a few different systems for compost tea, drenching. We'll talk about injectors. We don't have the injector we want yet. We'll show you the one we have. Um, and then we'll field questions.